Ladies and gentlemen, at the risk of sounding repetitive, the state of our state is strong. Arizona Governor Doug Ducey touching on education, water, and the border. We have highlights from his eighth and final State of the State address. The National Guard is helping out with COVID testing in California. I'm Donya Backus with a look at the rising number of cases and hospitalizations. Plus, why public health officials across the Imperial Valley are stressing the importance of following the renewed universal mask mandate in California. 13 on your side starts now. Good evening and thank you so much for choosing to be with us tonight on 13 on your side. I'm Scott Gross. The state of the state is strong. That's what Governor Doug Ducey said in his 2022 State of the Straight State of the State address, all part of opening day at the Arizona State Capitol. Many of the issues he touched on included creating jobs and strengthening border security. Ducey, who has blamed the current White House administration for the border crisis, did not hold back and holding them responsible and says it's one of the main things he wants to focus on during his last year in office. Our budget will make significant new investments to strengthen the border strike force, provide advanced equipment to aid in the pursuit of dangerous criminals, and deploy the latest drone technology to bolster surveillance and stop the cartels in their tracks. The governor also called on Senators Mark Kelly and Kristen Sinema to not vote on any federal legislation until the Biden administration does its part to improve border security. And this brings us to our topic of the day. Do you think border security should be Ducey's top priority? 69% of you said yes, 31% voted no. A big thank you to everyone who participated. Local public health leaders say COVID-19 cases across the Imperial Valley are increasing rapidly. And now six cases of the Omicron variant are present in Imperial County. 13 on your side's Wiley Jahari joins us in El Centro with the very latest. Public health officials are stressing the importance of following the renewed mask mandate to avoid a surge in hospitalizations. But the El Centro Regional Medical Center says that's already happening. A special meeting took place with the El Centro City Council Monday, where the Imperial County Public Health Department announced there are 1,364 active cases of COVID-19. Unfortunately, local health experts say this is only the beginning. We are expecting several hundred cases, positive cases to be reported, and several deaths. Hospitals like El Centro Regional Medical Center are seeing more and more hospitalizations as the new year proceeds. At one point, ECRMC says it had the most hospitalizations in the country based on population. When you take a look at total population, we were actually showing up on the top one spot in the country. The Public Health Department says it's doing all it can to enforce the new health order. But El Centro's mayor, Tomas Oliva, says it's not being enforced properly by some businesses, sharing an experience of his own at one local store. And I was informed that their corporate office had specifically directed them that they are not allowed to force someone to wear a mask, and they're also not allowed to ask them to leave. The El Centro Police Department says it will leave it up to each officer to decide whether or not they want to issue citations for locals not following the state health order. Now, although cases are going up, we are being shown data that COVID-19 isn't hitting as hard as it did last year, and public health officials attribute that to the success of the vaccines being administered, which, by the way, Imperial County right now has 83% of legible residents fully vaccinated. I'm Wiley Jahari reporting from El Centro. Vaccine makers say Omicron specific boosters could be ready by March. The news comes as the variant continues to fuel an unprecedented coronavirus surge in the U.S. Daniel Bacchus reports from Los Angeles. The nation is now averaging over 700,000 new cases a day, a number that exceeds the pandemic record set a year ago. We are in the midst of another COVID-19 tsunami. The surge prompted Harris County, Texas to increase its threat level to red, the highest possible. The positivity rate is 35 percent and the cases continue to climb. This level signifies a severe and uncontrolled level of COVID-19 in our community. 
The CDC says 99% of Americans live in areas where there is a high risk of infection. Chicago's public schools remain closed after the city rejected teachers' demand for at-home learning. Teaching remotely is five times harder for me. I know it's hard on my students, um, but it's a, it's a you know, last-ditch effort to keep the ICU beds open. Most school districts have stayed open. Students and teachers in Los Angeles lined up to be tested on Monday, the last day of their winter break. Hello, do you guys have an appointment? A negative test is required before they can return to their classrooms. Donya back is CBS News, Los Angeles. Staying in California, we have a plane crash and a train crash all in one. And in between, officers at the LAPD save the man just moments before the train hits his plane. Take a look. Oh, oh, oh. a tense moment as officers with the LAPD rescued a pilot from a downed plane just seconds before it was destroyed by an oncoming train. It was definitely the most intense uh, extrication of the uh, pilot from the aircraft I've seen. The morning after, pilots at Whiteman Airport nearby are praising the efforts of officers and that of the pilot himself for making the last minute decision to land the Cessna on the tracks. Uh, especially in this area with how dense the population is around this area and with the amount of time it seems like the pilot had to make these decisions. The FAA says the plane took off from Whiteman just after two in the afternoon on Sunday. Within seconds, there was a reported failure. An engine failure is what it seemed like he experienced or significant loss of power. On board was the owner of the plane, a former Air Force pilot with more than 50 years in the air, Mark Jenkins from Valencia. His family didn't want to speak on camera, but say he made the decision to land on the tracks for fear of hitting nearby homes or cars in a very populated area. It's something pilots say is always a concern at this airport. You are very limited in where you can go. And although the LAPD says it called to stop the trains, the message didn't make it in time. So officers standing by took action. At some point, we realized the train wasn't going to stop. But once we realized that a uh, train was coming at full speed down the tracks, uh, we knew we had no choice. We had to find a way to get him out of there or else he was going to die. Thankfully, they did. And Jenkins survived, as did the officers who risked their lives to save him. It was a scary moment, but everything worked out well. Joy Benedict, KCAL 9 News. Switching gears for a look outside here in the desert southwest. 63 degrees right now in Yuma, partly cloudy skies. And we have some windy conditions out there as well throughout portions of Yuma County. We will have gusty conditions continue as we work our way into Tuesday. Coming up in your first alert forecast, a wonderful week on hand. Yeah, we are looking for temperatures to be in the low to mid 70s. We do have a chance for rain as well and a fantastic viewer weather photo. I can't wait to share with you all of this coming up in just a little bit. In today's homegrown, biochar is a new type of soil farmers are experimenting with. Soil is naturally low in carbon and biochar helps to add carbon so crops can grow with more nutrients. A major threat Yuma County growers are trying to tackle is Fusarium wilt, a type of fungus. In an experience proved that biochar helps reduce the presence of this fungus in lettuce. We have a trial going now where we've added different amounts of biochar to the soil and um, we're seeing if uh, there's any reduced disease in the lettuce that's being grown there. And so far, so good. We are seeing some promising signs that, that might be not a silver bullet to, to kill all the pathogens, but to help reduce the impact of this disease. In comparison, Masson says carbon is given to patients that have alcohol poisoning to rid them of toxins. It's no different for crops fighting against the wilt toxin as well. Tax season is set to begin this month on January 23rd. The Internal Revenue Service made an announcement stating that having all of your information is encouraged in order to avoid processing and refund delays. The due date for filing taxes is April 18th of 2022, but some states may get an extension depending on if a holiday lands around the due date. Tax filing is available for free starting on January 14th through IRS 
free file. And in today's 13 on your sides, Eye on Jobs, our career expert has tips for those looking to see if the grass is greener on the other side, with many looking to enhance their lifestyles by way of making more money, they may be looking elsewhere before looking within their present companies. Leah Soto Graham with the Goodwill Career Center of Yuma says, what you're looking for may be easier to get than you think. First, set a meeting with your leader, have a discussion about your goals, what you hope to accomplish in the future. Take in all that you can in the role that you're in. Make sure to excel in that role, do everything that you need to be doing to be successful. Learn as much as you can. If you know somebody that would be a great mentor for you, reach out and connect with them. Having someone to help guide you through your career growth will be so beneficial. Now, if you need help getting ready for that one-on-one, -on -one, your local Goodwill Career Center can help with mock interviews. Just visit them in person or via the Goodwill website. Former President Trump wants several lawsuits tied to what some say his role was on January 6th thrown out. I'm Skyler Henry on Capitol Hill with more and the latest Trump ally saying no to the committee investigating the attack. Ah, uh, you could probably guess how this is going to go. Uncomfortably close close-ups, ingredients defying gravity, melting this, splashing that. Wait, is that much flavor even allowed? Charbroil double deals from Carl's Jr. for $3.49 each. Arizona's come a long way in the battle against COVID-19, but there's still a lot of work to do. Our hospitals are strained because of COVID-19 patients, most of whom are unvaccinated. To protect yourself and to help hospitals care for everyone, we need more people to get the vaccine. It's safe, free, and extremely effective. If you are vaccinated, we need you to get a booster so your protection is up to date. COVID-19 vaccines and boosters save lives. Roll up your sleeve today. Nick Bolton here with the latest from Bell & Howell. We call them TAC glasses. Inspired by the sunglasses worn by our heroes in uniform, TAC glasses block blinding glare so well, invisible objects suddenly become visible. Enhance colors to give you vision as sharp as an eagle's and survive even the harshest conditions. Look, ordinary sunglasses just make things darker. It could be deadly in a tactical situation. Tag glasses improve optical clarity so you can see clearly even in low light. If you've never seen how this light filtering technology works, check this out. Nothing to see, right? But look again as we hold up our tag glasses. A colorful American Eagle is revealed. Amazing. Act now to get your tag glasses for just $19.99 and we'll even ship it to you free. So don't delay. Order yours today. To order, call 1-800-287-1705. Again, that's 1-800-287-1705 or order online at TriTacGlasses.com. Here we go. One week. Seven days. Dozens of concerts. Thousands of country music fans. And me. One week in the life of country music stars. You won't believe what our cameras will catch. Tonight at 10, 9 central on ABC. Double up your burger game at Carl's Jr. Savor the flavor of our California classic, our double cheeseburger, and jalapeno double cheeseburger. Double down on flavor when you experience the charbroiled double deals at Carl's Jr. Just $3.49 each. Thirteen on your side starts now. Welcome back. I'm Scott Gross. Today, lawyers for President Trump, former President Trump, asked a federal judge to throw out a series of lawsuits from Democratic lawmakers and Capitol Police officers, all asking that the former president be held liable for the January 6th insurrection. Skylar Henry has more from Capitol Hill. A federal judge in Washington, D.C. heard arguments on whether three civil lawsuits accusing former President Donald Trump of inciting the January 6th Capitol assault can proceed. Two cases were brought by California Congressman Eric Swalwell and a group of House Democrats led by January 6th Committee Chair Benny Thompson. Two members of the U.S. Capitol Police Force filed a third suit seeking damages for physical and emotional injuries they say they suffered from the riot. It often is difficult to draw lines between what is said and what happens, particularly when the person who's making the statements isn't the person actually taking the actions to physically harm somebody. Lawyers for the former president want the lawsuits dismissed, claiming he has absolute immunity. In part, what the former president is arguing is that 
he can't be sued because he was present at the time and what the statements that he was making were official acts, that they were part of his official duties. Meanwhile, here on Capitol Hill, another key Trump ally, Congressman Jim Jordan, is refusing to cooperate with the House Select January 6th committee that's investigating the attack on the U.S. Capitol. The committee asked for a voluntary meeting last month, calling the Ohio Republican a material witness, given his direct contacts with former President Trump on January 6th. In a letter, Mr. Jordan wrote he has no confidence that the select committee will fairly or accurately represent any information he could provide. A committee spokesperson accused the congressman of trying to hide the facts and says the panel will consider appropriate next steps in the coming days. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Capitol Hill. Tonight, the U.S. ambassador to the U.N. is warning if Russia chooses the path of conflict in Ukraine. The U.S. and its allies are prepared to impose enormous costs on Russia's economy. The U.S. and Russia today began talks aimed at de-escalating the crisis, while Ukrainian troops tell CBS's Holly Williams they're ready for battle. In freezing conditions, we trekked along Ukraine's front line. With training and arms from America, they're fighting Russian-backed separatists. More than 14,000 people have been reported killed. Now there are fears of a Russian invasion. All my soldiers uh, in this time ready for, for battle. You're all ready to die yes, yes. to save Ukraine yes. from a Russian invasion. Yes. Some believe a Russian ground invasion moving in tanks and artillery is unlikely until the ground here freezes over. But here in the trenches, they've told us it could happen at any time. Today in Geneva, Russian officials claimed they have no plans for attack, despite the massive military buildup. The US side told them to return the troops to barracks or explain what they're doing there. But some here believe Russia's President Vladimir Putin is deliberately ratcheting up tensions to extract concessions from the U.S. and its allies. I think that Putin is blackmailing uh, President Biden. He's blackmailing other Western leaders because he thinks they can be fooled in this game. So it's down here. In Ukraine's capital, Kiev, they've renovated old bomb shelters in case of attack. It's a manually operated air filtration yeah, system. Yes. This one was built during the Cold War. Now the West and Russia are again at loggerheads. Holly Williams, CBS News. Back here in the desert southwest, a wonderful day in the 70s. How much longer will they continue? Days in the 70s, that is. I'll let you know straight ahead in your first short forecast. Although it seems like any ordinary day, it isn't. For one extraordinary reason. Because now with Spectrum Mobile, you get unlimited on two or more lines for $29.99 a line. This is a huge deal that'll make you feel larger than life. Get unlimited from Spectrum Mobile for just $29.99 with nationwide 5G included. Call 1-844-955-2999. It's the biggest news in mobile with the best deal ever. Get unlimited talk, text, and data for only $29.99 with no contracts, added taxes, or hidden fees, and nationwide 5G included. Save up to 60% on your mobile bill. Get gigantic savings with Unlimited from Spectrum Mobile for just $29.99. Call 1-844-955-2999 or visit a store near you. Switch today and you too will feel larger than life. Introducing the Cool Turtle, the ultra-comfortable mask enhancer that creates a protective, cool, and breathable space between your mask and your face. Simply slide under any mask or gaiter and immediately feel the refreshing pocket of air surrounding your face. Cool Turtle's ergonomically designed soft, comfortable shell immediately reduces mask friction, allowing you to breathe and talk in a comfortable environment. I can actually breathe. With the Cool Turtle, no more sweating. It's like I don't even have a mask on. Call now and get not one, not two, but three Cool Turtles for just $10. Order now and we'll send you two more Cool Turtles free. No fees, absolutely free. Plus, you can get a 10-pack of four-ply face masks. Just pay a separate fee. This offer is not available on Amazon. Get the real Cool Turtle now. Call 1-800-270-1219. That's 1-800-270-1219. Or visit at coolturtle.com. Order now. 
Next ET, we're with the cast of This Is Us before their final season return. I mean, I weep when I think about it. Plus, ET's first on set of the Blossom reunion. The cast, big plans for a TV comeback. It's so fun, it's like time stands still. Then, our exclusive with Gordon Ramsay, taking cooking to the next level. It's like Christmas Day here. Wow. Yeah. Next ET. A very good Monday evening to all of you across the desert southwest. Hope you enjoyed your day today. Hope you had a very good weekend. We have a very good week. A very nice temperatures in store for us as we take a look outside in the RV world of Yuma Skycam. Very dark out there, pitch black out there. We have partly cloudy skies. We're waiting for that sun to rise again tomorrow morning, 742 Mountain Time, 646 for those of you in California on the uh, Pacific time. Winds have calmed down, still a little breezy. You can see some of those treetops uh, waving back and forth in the uh, breeze as well. Gusty wind uh, will come back into the uh, desert southwest here very shortly. A look right now. Now, at the satellite and radar shows, we do have that heavy cloud cover moving in, and that was from about 7 o'clock this evening. We still uh, have a few spots in that cloud blanket uh, where you may be able to see the moon or some stars tonight, but for the most part, we're going to be pretty cloudy as we get into tomorrow. A look at our future wind scale shows that we do have those gusty winds and they will continue into tomorrow morning for the communities right along that Colorado River and they entail San Luis, Yuma, YPG. Uh, we'll see some of those winds uh, picking up into tomorrow night as well. A look at our air quality index brought to us by the Imperial County Air Pollution Control District. Not affecting uh, the Imperial Valley much at all. Again, it's just a light breeze out there. Good throughout most of the valley until we get to the south. Collect Mexico and Mexicali, both a moderate reading tonight. Temperatures, let's stay in the Imperial Valley. 51 Imperial, 52 El Centro, 53 in Hopeville, and across the county and state line into Yuma County, Arizona. We're at 62 now in Yuma, 64 in the Foothills, and 60 in Welton and Tecna. Our viewer photo of the day comes from Welton. Margie Ubin, or Ubin, however you would like to say it, 13th green on the Coyote Wash Golf Course out in Welton. A gorgeous photo. You can see that Margie caught a rainbow off here into the distance. Uh, this was after some of the rains that we had a couple weeks ago. She just sent this in about 10 days ago. A gorgeous photo. Margie, thank you so much for sharing that with us. And if you have a photo you can share with the rest of us as well, scan that QR code. It'll take you magically right to the weather photo gallery. It's just like you're taking a photo of it. And then boom, just takes you right there. Upload your photo from your phone. Include your name and a slight description as Margie did as well. You can also drop it off to me on social media or on our homepage at kyma.com slash share. Jumping ahead to your Metrocast tonight Midnight should be cloudy, 59 degrees as you get up tomorrow morning to start your Tuesday. 52 degrees and cloudy, and tomorrow at high noon, still um, partly cloudy sky, 67, but we're going to warm up from there. Take a look at your seven-day forecast. 72 tomorrow, again, still gusty winds throughout Yuma, YPG in that area. 72 degrees and breezy on Wednesday, but a very nice week. A small chance for maybe some small showers on Thursday. Same can be said for the Imperial Valley. Mid-70s sounds pretty good. Again, a slight chance maybe of some rain on Thursday, but for the most part, uh, our average is 69.70 for this time of year. We're going to be above that into the weekend. Next on 13 on your side, prep sports are back in full force, and that means it's time for another installment of Top Plays of the Week. Find out who nabbed the top spot straight ahead in sports. Now, the most explosive force in music returns to San Diego. Garth Brooks, Saturday, March 5th, 7 p.m., Petco Park. Tickets on sale Friday, January 14th, 10 a.m. Pacific. One price, $94.95, all inclusive. But only at Ticketmaster.com slash Garth Brooks. Garth Brooks. Petco Park. An incomparable night never to be forgotten. On sale Friday, January 14th, 10 a.m. Pacific. Presented by Amazon Music. Careful, your regular old can opener leaves razor sharp edges. Ouch! You need the new Safety Can Express. Now you can pop the top off and leave perfectly smooth edges on the lid and the can. Other openers use blades to cut through the lid, leaving razor sharp edges. Safety Can Express actually unseals the lid from the side, leaving smooth, safe edges. Safety Can works on broken pop top cans, dented cans, big heavy cans, small odd shaped cans too. 
No more sharp steel when safety can breaks the seal. Call and get the new Safety Can Express for just $29.99. But wait, call now and you can double your order. Just pay a separate fee. We'll even ship it to you fast and free. This offer is not available on Amazon. Call now. Call 1-800-991-1611 or visit safetycanexpress.com. So call 1-800-991-1611 now. It's time for a talk. If you're 45 or older, you need to get yourself screened for colon cancer. This disease can be very treatable when caught early, so the sooner you know what's up with your health, the better. The good news is, is that there's options for getting screened that are easier than you think. Get informed. Hey, we're all busy, and we think, when would we fit it in? Well, make the time. It just might mean more time with your family down the road. If you're a man or a woman, 45 or older, I'm talking to you. I've lost good friends, young friends, to colon cancer. Don't make the mistake of waiting until you have symptoms or think that you have no risk because it doesn't run in your family. Everybody needs to be screened. So take control. Get screened for colon cancer, 45 or older. Learn how. Standuptocancer.org slash colon cancer. This segment sponsored in part by Nationwide Vision, serving Arizona for 35 years. Welcome back. I'm Scott Gross. The final game of the NFL regular season, just too good not to show you yet again the Chargers in Las Vegas. Raiders last night, a lot on the line. The winner would advance to the playoffs next weekend. The loser, their season would be over. However, if they managed a tie, both would advance to the postseason and knock out Pittsburgh. High stakes in Vegas last night to Allegiant Stadium. Late fourth quarter under five minutes to play on fourth and 21. Justin Herbert finds Joshua Palmer down the middle for a 23-yard touchdown. The rookie from Tennessee with a huge catch for the score. Chargers also choose to go for the two-point conversion a little early. Well, they got it. Chargers just a touchdown down at 29-22. Chargers with the ball again, another fourth down with five seconds remaining in regulation. Herbert finds Mike Williams for the touchdown as time expires. Chargers add the extra point and send the game into overtime. Raiders, Chargers, and Steelers fans on the edge of their seats. Into overtime we go. Raiders with the ball first, and Daniel Carlson just sneaks the 40-yard kick inside the goalpost. Raiders up by three. Now, it's the Chargers' turn, and it comes down to another fourth down. Again, Herbert will find Mike Williams, and Williams takes the catch all the way down to the Raiders' 27-yard line, and that would set up this. Dustin Hopkins, the kicker for the Chargers' season on the line. Here he comes, deep breath. Hopkins will sneak this 41-yard kick between the goalposts. Chargers have had some bad luck with kickers in the past. Not on this moment. Game tied at 32. That sets up a next score win scenario or a tie sends both teams into the playoffs. Again, it's the Raiders Carlson. He's never missed in this building. And with two seconds left in overtime, he drills the 47-yard game winner. Raiders make the playoffs. Pittsburgh makes the playoffs. Chargers season is over. 35-32 Raiders will win a wild one in Vegas and play Cincinnati next week. Now, Daniel Carlson's game-winning kick in overtime settled the NFL playoff picture last night. It sends, again, Vegas to Cincinnati instead of Kansas City if the game would have ended in a tie. It also gave Pittsburgh the last AFC wildcard spot. The Steelers will face Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs who are trying to get to their third straight Super Bowl. The NFL playoffs will kick off on Saturday. You can follow the coverage of the postseason right here on CBS. Now to my top plays of the week, number five, Cibola's girls basketball team, Rory Hoffmeyer with the steal. The pass ahead to Isabella Molina, who dishes down low for Mia Soria. Everyone's playing, a selfish play from the Lady Raiders. Number four, girls soccer, Palo Verde's Magna Rodriguez along the end line passes to Samantha Lopez, who finds the back of the net. Number three, same game, Palo Verde's Summer Hodge, make that Summer Hedge, with the centering pass deflected to Ellen Rodriguez, puts a shot on net, but a great save made by Yuma's Malia Cabrera. Number two, more girls soccer, Kofa's Diana Gonzalez sets and delivers a long-range shot. Watch this, it's going to deflect off a deflender, doink, and sails into the back of the net. And my top play of the week, more Cibola Lady Raiders. Lots of passing once again. 
to find the open shooter. It's Mia Soria who launches a deep three. Nothing but net. Soria with a little flex at the end. Those are my top plays of the week. And in college football tonight, it's the national championship game between Georgia and Alabama. Georgia hasn't defeated Alabama since 2007, hasn't won a national championship since 1980. Tonight, Georgia got the win 33-18. to Straight ahead, a look back on the life of comedian Bob Saget. The highly anticipated 27th annual Yuma Home and Garden Show returns to the Civic Center. See hundreds of displays and what's new in home improvement. Compare, shop, save, and win big at the hourly cash grab and other giveaways. Attend cooking demos, visit the arts and crafts displays, and enjoy the free classic car show. Get all your gardening questions answered in the Garden Club showroom. Don't miss all the fun. It happens January 14th, 15th, and 16th at the Yuma Civic Center. Are you over the age of 50 and considering buying an annuity in the next 60 days? I have some important news for you. Don't buy an annuity until you understand the pros and cons of annuities. Call now for this free book on maximizing your income in retirement. Annuity Do's and Don'ts for Baby Boomers from leading financial firm J.D. Milberg. That's right, free. This book reveals little-known truths about annuities in simple-to-understand terms. Grab a pen right now because we're about to offer you this free book that unlocks the five little-known truths we believe baby boomers and seniors should know before buying an annuity. And it's free. Call 800-268-4040. As a bonus, we'll also throw in a free annuity rate report. We researched numerous products and summarized rates and benefits of annuities, all from Sentinel Security Life Insurance Company. Call 800-268-4040. That's 800-268-4040. Call now. My name is William Yank. I'm a 23-year-old, three-time leukemia survivor. One evening, my roommate was trying to talk to me, and I responded to him in a delirium of mess and confusion, and he said, we're going to the ER immediately, and came back with leukemia. They started me on chemos, they started me on a bunch of antibiotics, but the chemo wasn't exactly working. So my oncologist decided that he wanted to try me with CAR T cell therapy, and it worked. The Leukemia Lymphoma Homeless Society was this unforeseen blessing for me because I wouldn't have been able to get CAR-T cell therapy. I got that FDA approval in 2017 and I wouldn't have had that option had the Leukemia Lymphoma Homeless Society not moved that forward. We are about nine months and feeling very healthy, strong, and I live. To give or get help, visit LLS.org. Before we go tonight, tributes are pouring in following the death of actor and comedian Bob Saget. The Full House star was found dead yesterday in a hotel room in Orlando. He was 65. CBS's Jamie Yukas reports. Authorities say comedian Bob Saget had failed to check out of his room at the Ritz-Carlton Orlando Sunday. After his family had been unable to contact him, hotel security found the 65-year-old comedian lying in bed, face up, and not breathing. What's going on there? We have an unresponsive guest in a room. My officer is telling me that he, that there's no pulse. A preliminary investigation found no signs of foul play or drug use. Saget had performed near Jacksonville the night before, tweeting in the early hours Sunday, love tonight's show, appreciative audience. Girls, I am taking all three of you out for father-daughter day. Known as America's dad, Saget played Danny Tanner, a widowed father raising three girls on the hit comedy Full House. Sometimes you're so corny. He was also the first host of America's Funniest Home Videos. Thank you, I really didn't expect that response. And later, also the invisible narrator on the CBS hit, How I Met Your Mother. In addition to his wholesome TV image, Saget was also known for raunchy and sometimes dark humor as a stand-up comedian. But we made these children, my wife and I. We actually TV comedy legend so Norman Lear considered Saget a friend. Uh, do you think he was always meant to be a comedian? He could have been anything. It's our good fortune that he stumbled into comedy. In a recent interview with CBS's Dr. John LaPook, he reflected on grief after the loss of his sister. Humor is the only way my family survived. Humor he had begun to develop at just four years old. I would dance in the living room. Um, and just start dancing, dancing stupid. I've got to perform, I've got to make people laugh. 
The coroner completed his autopsy today. The investigation is still ongoing and can last up to 12 weeks to complete. Meanwhile, Saget is survived by his wife and three daughters. Jamie Yuka, CBS News, Hollywood. So much for watching us tonight. I'm Scott Gross. From one comedian to another, Stephen Colbert is next.